First, remove the front wheel. With this particular truck, remove the center cap and crack loose the lug nuts with the wheel on the ground. Use a floor jack to raise the vehicle and put jack stands under for safety. Lower the truck onto the jack stand. Always refer to the owner's manual for proper jack points on your vehicle. So you have the best view of our project, we've put our truck on a lift. Now that the wheel is off the ground, continue by removing the lug nuts and the wheel. On this particular truck, we know the owner fairly recently replaced the brake pads, but not the rotors. He's been experiencing noise in the front brakes, and it's easy to see there's a lot of corrosion and unusual wear on the rotors. This truck is from the Atlantic coast and lived through a major hurricane, so rust and corrosion are part of the problem with the brakes. We're going to go ahead and replace the pads, rotors, and calipers. Remove the caliper slide bolts and pull the caliper off. You might need to persuade it by gently prying it with a pry bar or a flathead screwdriver. You don't want to put any stress on the brake lines, so you can also use a bungee cord to suspend the caliper above the work area, keeping stress off the brake lines. Remove the pads from the bracket. In this case, we needed to use a screwdriver to pry them out. We're not worried about damaging the rotors or pads since we're replacing them. Now remove the old hardware. Most new brake pads come with new hardware and lube in the box. If yours does not, we highly recommend getting the new hardware kit and a small pack of brake lube. Remove the caliper mounting bracket by removing the two bolts on the inside. It's probably a good idea to spray a little penetrating oil on these bolts and have a breaker bar handy just in case they're tight. Once the bracket is off, remove the rotor. Here's an important step that's often overlooked when replacing brakes. With the rotor off, take a few minutes to smooth the surface where the hub and rotor come together. Having rust or other debris here can prevent the new rotor from turning true and may cause a pulsing in the brake pedal. Use some penetrating oil, a putty knife, or abrasive cloth to remove any rust or debris around the lugs and on the face of the hub. Speaking of cleaning, here is the best way to prepare your new rotors for installation. When rotors are made at the factory, they're coated in an oil to prevent rust during shipping. First, it's recommended to spray the new rotors thoroughly with brake cleaner. If the rotor you're installing has veins along the edge, be sure to spray into those veins to get all of the oils out of the rotor. The next step for cleaning the rotors is to wash them with dish soap and water. This ensures there are no oils or microscopic metal shavings from the manufacturing process left on the surface of the rotors. Matching the lugs to the holes in the rotor, slide the new rotor into place. Put a couple lug nuts on the studs to temporarily hold the rotor in place while putting on the new bracket. Put the new bracket on and wrench tighten the bolts. On this truck, we're going to replace the calipers, but that's not always necessary. To reuse the old calipers, you'll need to compress the caliper piston. We'll demonstrate on the rear caliper, but the process is the same for the front. Open the bleeder valve on the rear of the caliper. Once the bleeder is open, use a brake caliper tool, and if you don't have one, they're available as a loaner tool from Advanced Auto Parts or CarQuest. Put the tool into the caliper, compress the piston so it goes all the way back into the caliper. You'll need a container to catch the brake fluid as it squirts out of the bleeder. Once the piston is completely compressed, tighten the bleeder. After doing this to each caliper, you may need to add brake fluid to the reservoir. Also, anytime you come into contact with brake fluid, change your gloves so you don't get brake fluid on the other brake components or the vehicle paint. On the bench, prepare the new caliper by removing the plastic plug. Remove the brake line from the old caliper. Once it's off, Throw away the old bolt and crush washers. It's critical that you do not reuse them. Your new caliper will come with replacements. Before installing the brake line onto the new caliper, clean the surface where the line connects. Now install the brake line to the caliper. Pay close attention to how you install the crush washers. Place one on the bolt, push the bolt through the brake line hole, then put the second crush washer on between the surfaces of the brake line and the caliper. Connect the bolt to the caliper and tighten to the proper torque. 
Clean off any spilled brake fluid. At this point, change your rubber gloves to ensure you didn't get any brake fluid on the rotor or pads. Before installing the new hardware, put a thin film of brake lube on any of the hardware that comes in contact with moving parts. Clip the hardware into place. It's also a good idea to put a very thin film of brake grease on the rear of the pad where it comes into contact with the caliper piston and the caliper bracket. Also put some grease on the edge of the pad where it comes into contact with the hardware. This will prevent noise. Clip the new pads into place on the bracket. And slide the new caliper over the entire assembly. Once the bolts are wrenched tight, Go back with the torque wrench and set it to the proper torque for each set of bolts, including the brake line, the caliper bracket, and the slide bolts. Of course, always replace your brakes in pairs. Since we opened the brake lines, we need to bleed the system. Start by topping off the brake fluid in the reservoir under the hood. Anytime you open the brake lines, you expose the system to air, so you have to bleed the lines. Since we opened only the front brake lines, we only need to bleed those. Always start bleeding the corner farthest from the master cylinder, which is located under the hood in front of the driver. So in this case, we're only bleeding the front brakes, so we start with the front passenger side. Have a friend in the driver's seat push the brake pedal to the floor and hold. Open the bleeder, then close it. Now have your friend let up on the brake pedal. Yeah. Repeat this two or three yeah. times or until all the air is out of the lines. Then move to the front driver's side and repeat the same process. Once you have the air out of the system, make sure the pedal is firm and not spongy. Again, check the brake fluid level and add brake fluid if needed. Once both sides are installed and the wheels are back on the vehicle, the final step to the brake job is the road test which includes the burnishing process. This helps marry the new pads to the new rotors and will help eliminate any brake noise. While different brake pad manufacturers offer slightly different procedures, ASE recommends the 30-30-30 procedure. This means traveling at 30 miles per hour and slowly braking nearly stopping completely. Let up off the pedal and let the brakes cool for about 30 seconds. Repeat the process 30 times. Of course, always perform the burnishing process in a safe place. Think ahead. Think advance.